So once your vision is clarified, the next piece that you need are your immutable laws. Your immutable laws become the guardrails in the business, and they really show your team members and your clients what's acceptable and what's out of bounds behavior. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question. What has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling. I'm the business psychologist, the author of the Four Week Vacation and the How to Hire the Best series, as well as the founder of Tap the Potential, where we coach entrepreneurs like you to design sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. Because after all, we believe work supports life, not the other way around. Weekly on the Profit by Design podcast, we bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. Hey there. I'm curious, who is ready to take a four-week vacation? If you are watching this live, comment in the chat below. Just say, yes, I am ready. Hi there. I'm your host of the Profit by Design podcast. I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling. I'm the business psychologist, the author of the How to Hire the Best series, as well as the four-week vacation. And in the spirit of it being summertime and I think it's just important that us entrepreneurs be able to take vacation. Everybody else gets vacation. When you have a job somewhere, you get paid vacation. And us entrepreneurs need to be able to do the same in our businesses. And I know that it's really challenging to do that. And it's my mission to support entrepreneurs and taking their lives back from their business. And at Tap the Potential, we coach entrepreneurs every single day to where you have these growing businesses. And that's wonderful when your businesses are succeeding. And at the same time, they can take over your life and the struggles with payroll, cash flow, employee issues, all of that can keep you awake at night. It keeps you feeling like you have to be available and present in your business for every little thing. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't have to be that way. You can have a business that supports your life. And on the Profit by Design podcast, over the next few weeks, we're doing a series here to talk to you about how to take a fully unplugged four-week vacation. And the good news for you is you don't have to take a fully unplugged four-week vacation to benefit from what I'm teaching you. You can start with a week off unplugged or two weeks or three weeks and build up to the four-week vacation. And, And That's what I recommend, as a matter of fact. And so what you're learning here on the podcast is about making your business where it can grow and be sustainably profitable, whether you're working today or you choose to take the day off. How wonderful would it be to be able to walk out of your office this afternoon and know that everything's going to be handled and you're going to take a three or four day long weekend, right? That is what this is all about. In our Better Business, Better Life program, we are supporting entrepreneurs every single day in making this a reality in their businesses. And if you've been listening to me on the podcast and you're thinking, I really want that for myself, I want to have that business that can grow without me and where I can enjoy my life and you want our support, I encourage you, book a consult with us at Tap the Potential. Let us support you in that. You can just head over to our homepage at tapthepotential.com and you'll see the link there to book a consult. And we'd be happy happy to meet with you and talk with you about where you're challenged, where you need support and what our support might look like for you. So onward, we're here to talk about what it means to take a four vacation and what you need to put in place for your business to be able to run without you. So last week on the podcast, I talked to you about the critical things, the mindset that you have to have when you are working on taking vacation and really getting yourself in a place where you give yourself permission even that it's okay to do that. I gave you powerful questions that you can ask yourself to move you forward. So I think one of the things that we are not always aware of is that we repeat statements in our head that keep us stuck. When we say things like, I tried that and it won't work because, or 
I went on vacation and it was a disaster. These are all statements that reinforce the present reality that we want to get away from. And so if we want something different, if we want something better, we have to ask better questions. So I went over some questions, some powerful questions that you could use to shift your mindset, such as what can I do differently? What might I learn? Where might I learn this? I wonder what will happen when. Those are powerful questions. So if you need the mindset support, go back and listen to part one. It's episode 248 on the Profit by Design podcast. I also talked to you last week about the dynamics that you might unintentionally be putting in place in your team where you are over functioning and your team gets away with under functioning. And I think this is such a curious dynamic that even if you've hired a players, they will come into your business with all this energy. But if you are a control freak, and you don't give up control, you are going to teach those A players to under function while you over function. So that's a dynamic. And I walked you through some ways to start changing that dynamic in your business and creating a better balance where everyone is functioning and working together as a team. And the other thing that I talked about last week, if you missed it, is delegation and making sure that you are working on your highest value activities, those $10,000 an hour activities that we talk about so much here at, at Tap the Potential and on the Profit by Design podcast. So the $10,000 an hour activities are the activities that support the sweet spot that allow the business to grow. And if you, the business owner, are so busy doing the $10 an hour activities that you never have time to get around to doing those $10,000 an hour activities, no one else in the business is doing them either. And you're not growing. So I walked you through how to start delegating. And by the way, if you haven't downloaded our chart of $10,000 an hour activities, head on over to tapthepotential.com forward slash 10K. So those of you who are watching this live, I encourage you interact with me in the comments. We've also got our team monitoring the comments. We broadcast live every Friday at 1130 Central on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. And we want this to be an interactive discussion. So as I go today, if you have questions or you're curious about something or something really resonates with you, just pop it in the chat and let me know. So we're going to talk now in part two of this series about how to set your team up for success. There's a quote that my mother gave me years ago. I was probably still a teenager living at home and I carried it around with me. I've lost the little picture of Ziggy because it was a Ziggy quote, but it was a lot of people have gone further than they thought they could because someone else thought they could. Now, Zig Ziglar is the one who originally said this, but when my mom gave it to me, it had his name, but it also had a picture of Ziggy, the cartoon. <laughs> and that just touched me so much. And I've carried it with me because I have recognized in my life that I have had mentors who have set me up for success, who saw that I could do something greater than I was currently doing, and they were confident in me that I could do that. And that is a key mindset for us to have when it comes to thinking about our A players on our teams. We need to recognize when we've hired A players that they are whole, competent, capable, and complete. And there is so much that they can be doing in our businesses if we set them up for success. If we don't set them up for success, we can hire these A players. They'll come into our business. They will disappoint us. They will frustrate us and they will quickly go elsewhere because we will frustrate them. So what I'm talking about with you today in terms of setting your team up for success is great because they're going to need it if you take a four week vacation. But even if you never take a four-week vacation, you need this for your team so that your A players can grow and thrive and really feel like they have possibilities to move up within your company. So empowering your team to make decisions is a big step toward you taking your life back from your business. The more your team can make decisions on their own or come together as a team to make even more complex decisions without your involvement, the stronger and more resilient your company is. And what's interesting to me as I have gotten our team stronger and stronger in this decision making process is that our team as a whole, our leadership team makes better decisions than I make on my own. And that is so important for us to be aware of because when we, the entrepreneur, are making these decisions in a vacuum, 
we are missing things. We're missing critical information. We're missing perspective from people who deal on the front lines of our business. We're missing perspective from other industries. And I love when our leadership team comes together and we talk about more complex issues and there's multiple perspectives. And I say, you know, here's what I think we should do. And then I always, I've learned, I pause and I say, and I want to hear from the rest of you. What ideas do you have? What thoughts? And I love when someone blows me away and I go, oh, I haven't thought of that. Or that's something that if I hadn't considered it and we don't move forward in this direction, it would have really come back and undermined us or bit us in the butt, so to speak. So this is a powerful way of thinking about this. So to do this effectively, to set your team up to make decisions effectively without you, there are a few things that are critical things that you need. The first is your compelling, vivid vision. The next is your immutable laws. And then you need your field of play and then you need your filter questions. So today we're going to go through the compelling vivid vision, immutable laws and field of play. And then next week, I'm going to talk to you about filter questions and how to use those effectively with your team to get them asking better questions. And when you have your compelling vision and your immutable laws and your field of play, you too are going to make better decisions. So this just up levels the business all around. So let's talk about what is your compelling vivid vision. So first off, I want to clarify that when you take the time to write out your compelling vivid vision, this is a $10,000 an hour activity and it is best done away from the business. <laughs> so you need to block out some time, ideally at least a long weekend. So three days off from the business, go somewhere, clear your head and let yourself dream and think about what is it that you are really wanting to create because your vision becomes, if you've seen me share the survival trap previously, your vision becomes your focus of where you're headed. And every time you get confronted with an opportunity or a choice to make, you can refer to that vision and ask yourself, does this choice, if I make this choice, does it move me directly towards my vision? Or is it something that kind of looks like it's aligned with my vision? But if we track it out over time, it's going to take us far off track from our vision. Take the time to create this vision. And one of the things that we are so different about at Tap the Potential from other business coaching companies is that we don't start off by talking to you about your revenue goals. We start off by asking you, what do you want? How do you want your life to be? What wins do you want to be celebrating a year from now? When you create your vision, I encourage you to start from the perspective of your life. And how do you want your life to be? Put aside thoughts about what's possible. You know, the gremlin that's going to come up in your head is those things aren't possible. You can't have that. Your business isn't set up for that. And really allow yourself to dream. And if you could have your life be however you want it, how would you have it be? And I get a lot of questions around this, like how far out should I vision? And I've recently changed my answer to this question. I really think 10 years is a great vision because 10 years is big, hairy, and audacious, and it will force you to think big. And the reason that I've come to think about 10 years as a better perspective than two years or three years is that when we think about 10xing the parts of our life that really matter to us, if we were going to 10x our personal life, our health, our relationships, what would that look like? And when we think about how we're going to 10x, then we can look at what we're currently doing and the choices we have in front of us today and decide which 20% of what we have planned to do is actually going to move us in that direction of that big, hairy, audacious vision and goal. And 80% of what's in front of us won't. And by the way, this comes from Dr. Benjamin Hardy's book, 10X is Easier Than 2X. It's a great book. And so that's what's really shifted my thinking on visioning that I think we need to vision bigger. And at the same time, I want to acknowledge sometimes when you are in the survival trap, it is very hard to think beyond a year or two years or three years, that feels like very far out. So what's more important here is that you do the vision. If you can't think 10 years, don't get hung up on that. Start with one year and just create like, here's where we're headed. This is what we are trying to accomplish. 
I would encourage you, though, to think about 10xing your sweet spot in your business as you vision. And so when you identify how you want your life to be and you think about the free time that you want to have and what could you do with that free time. And if you're someone who just loves to work. Like, and we hear that so much at Tap the Potential. I just love what I'm doing. And even some of our team members at Tap the Potential, including myself, can get into places where we just, we're so excited about what we're doing, or it's so fun, or it's so engaging and so interesting to us. We don't want to stop. We don't want to go play in our personal lives because this thing over here is so interesting and engaging. And I would encourage you that you think about building a life away from work because our creativity is enhanced when we stop working. There's research that shows that anything beyond a 25 to 30 hour work week, we really start to lose our effectiveness in what we're doing, especially when we're working on things that require our problem solving and our knowledge. And so much of what you're doing as a business owner and entrepreneur requires your problem solving and knowledge. And you're, that's going to deteriorate past a 25 to 30 hour work week. And so think about what you would like to be doing away from work. What compels you? What's interesting? What would be so compelling and so interesting to you that you'd rather do that than work? That's what you need to identify and include that in your vision and flesh that out so that you have a reason to be away from the work. And the stronger that compelling vision is, the easier it makes it for you to set the parameters in place for your team to handle things in your absence. And it makes it easier for you to work through the challenges that come up around that because you have something that's pulling you, that's compelling you in your life. So once you've gotten clarity on your life vision, then I encourage you to think about 10Xing your sweet spot. And I know exactly where your mind is going now. Okay, Dr. Sabrina, you just told me to think about this really compelling life that I'm going to create. And now you want me to 10X my sweet spot in the business and make myself even busier? Like that doesn't work. And this is what's so powerful that I want to share with you about this 10X thinking is that if you 10X your sweet spot and in your sweet spot is that combination of who your ideal clients are and what you and your team are doing for them from your strengths that they appreciate so much and value so much. And it's the systems that you put in place around that sweet spot. So that's where your profitable revenue lies in the business. And so if you're going to 10x that profitable revenue and that profitable part of your business, what does that look like? And it also allows you to say no to a lot of things that have nothing to do with 10X in your sweet spot. So it actually makes you play a bigger game. You have to make bolder decisions, which will move you towards the 10X, because if you're just doing 2X, you're moving incrementally, but you make bolder decisions that get you to the 10X. And you can also look at what you're currently doing and the choices in front of you, the 20% that actually pertains to getting you to the 10X sweet spot of the business and the 80% that has nothing to do with it. So it actually makes you less busy. We have people at Tap the Potential who are working 25 hour work weeks. We have clients who are shaving off from coming from working 60 hour, 70 hour weeks, working with us in our Better Business, Better Life program. And they're getting to the point where they can work 25 hours a week. And it's not like you have to choose. Do I have to take a four week vacation or do I have to choose between a 25 hour work week? You can have both. When your business is streamlined and efficient around the sweet spot, so many things that feel really complex right now become easier. Hiring becomes easier. You need fewer team members. You need A players, but you don't need as many team members because your A players are going to work around your sweet spot. And A players are 900 to 1200% more productive than warm bodies. When you know how to hire A players and you hire them and they come in and they have clarity on what's expected from them, they can get to work and they can do things that and take initiative without you having to tell them all the time, here's what's next. And that's the biggest difference between a B player and an A player. An A player, you can give the overall vision, the immutable laws and the expected results and they will find ways to make that happen. And probably they'll come up with better ways than you would come up with. That's the beauty in all of this. And so as you're thinking about this for yourself, write out that vision of 10xing the sweet spot of your business and 10xing your personal life and the things that matter most to you. 
and what that looks like. And really, as you write, write in the personal perspective, like I am, and as if it's happening currently. Our minds are so powerful. And what we say to ourselves is what we create. And so when we write this vision from the present tense, as though it's happening, and we write it from the I am personal perspective, we have filled our mind with what we are creating and our mind will go to work on identifying opportunities to bridge the gaps and fill in the gaps from where we are currently in our life to moving toward that vision. It's It almost feels magical and it's not magic. It's just that it shifts our attention and our attention is so, so powerful. So you heard me talk at the beginning of this episode, how if we fill our minds with the things that won't work and the things we're not happy about and the things that frustrate us, what we focus on grows. When we create this compelling, vivid vision, what we focus on grows. This vision will grow in our lives and in our business. The vision is very powerful for you, the entrepreneur, and it's incredibly powerful for your team. I encourage you after you've written your vision, you want to share it with your team. You want to get it out there and ask them how what they see in it as you share it and how do they want to experience growing the business in this way and one of the things that is really important to do as you flesh out this vision is describe what's going to be going on in the different areas of the business for the team members what their experiences will be so that they can see how they will benefit from how the vision is realized and accomplished the ways that the opportunities that they will have to grow and the experience what they'll be feeling and things that clients will be saying as the vision is achieved so you know part of our vision is that we will i will be getting emails from our clients saying i'm so happy with melissa and kate i can't believe caitlin did this or carson did that those are things that where we're getting such positive feedback from our clients. And I wrote that into our vision so that our team members know this is what we're looking for. We're looking to create this kind of experience and for work to feel fun, energized, exciting, because we are out there in the world changing lives. And that's, that's part of our vision. Another part of our vision is our big, hairy, audacious goal. And in 10 years, we want to send 10,000 entrepreneurs on a four-week vacation because to us, that will show us that we are disrupting hustle culture because there will be 10,000 entrepreneurs out there in the world talking to other entrepreneurs, encouraging them and showing them what's possible. So as you create your vision, I really encourage you to dream big. In my book, The Four-Week Vacation, I've laid out all the directions, like step by step, for how to write your compelling, vivid vision. I've given you powerful questions to get you thinking about different areas in your life and different areas in the business. You can see our vision at Tap the Potential as an example, and we have Mary Pierce's vision in there. She was so generous to share that with us so that you could have an example of what a vision looks like that is compelling to you and to your team. So once your vision is clarified, the next piece that you need are your immutable laws. Your immutable laws become the guardrails in the business, and they really show your team members and your clients what's acceptable and what's out of bounds behavior. And so if you don't have immutable laws, Number one, it's kind of dangerous to operate without immutable laws. And those of you who have written your immutable laws and started using them, you can probably easily reflect back on times when you didn't have these clarified and how much difficulty it created for you in dealing with clients, and customers, vendors, because people just have different ways of doing business in the world. And once we clarify our immutable laws, we are saying this is how we do life. This is how we do business. And we want to attract other people, other clients, other vendors, other partners who want to do business in the same way. And when you have everyone on the team working from the same immutable laws because their individual core values are aligned with those immutable laws, it's this feeling of like, 
we are all in this together. This is how we're going to handle things. And we're proud of the decisions and choices we make because they align with our immutable laws. And immutable laws are part of this decision-making filter that your team members need to have in your absence because no matter how long you're gone and you're unavailable, something will come up that is completely out of the blue, a situation you guys have never encountered before. It's inevitable. It happens with every vacation I take. I've seen it happen over and over in our clients' businesses. And if you don't have clear immutable laws, your team members are just going to figure out how to handle it. And you may or may not like how they handle it. But when you have clear immutable laws in the business, number one, you can be confident that your A players are going to make decisions that align with your immutable laws. But the other thing that's going to probably pleasantly surprise you is they might make better decisions than you would have made in those situations because they're not as stressed as you are, as the business owner is. And when we're stressed, it's very easy for us to get in that fear-based thinking. And so your team members are more removed from the situation. It's not as impactful to them emotionally as it can be to us as the business owner. And so they'll be able to use the vision, the immutable laws as the guardrails for how they make their decisions. So one example of immutable laws is in, in play is to think about the worst day that you've had at work recently. Like, you know, everything went wrong and maybe something really bad happened with a client and it just really messed up the service delivery. And talk to your team about, you know, if we were going to handle this situation completely in line with our immutable laws, where we could reflect back on the choices we made and feel really good, even though the outcome may have been a difficult outcome to accept, but we reflect back on our behavior and the choices we made. Do we feel good about how we conducted ourselves and those choices we made? When people can say yes you know, absolutely, yes, then it's easier to come to terms with those circumstances, even if we don't like how they turned out. And it also becomes a way for you to start teaching your team to make decisions in alignment with the immutable laws. So in my book, The Four Week Vacation, I walk you through how to identify your immutable laws. And by the way, we have the jump start coming up in about a week or so. Make sure you're signed up for that, the Better Business, Better Life Jumpstart, because on one of the days of the Jumpstart, we walk you through how to identify your immutable laws and you get to identify them and come and bring it back to us the next day. You can share what they are and really we can help you hone and refine those. So if you're not signed up for the Jumpstart, go over to tapthepotential.com forward slash Jumpstart and get signed up. So your, the easiest ways to identify your immutable laws are to think about something that has made you proud recently, because whatever's made you proud is an indicator there's a core value in there that aligns with who you are, that was reflected in that circumstance. And you want to take that core value and turn it into one of your immutable laws in the business. Another way to identify your immutable law is to think about what's ticked you off recently, because anything that's made you angry has violated one of your core values. So try to identify what was it specifically that made you angry and what value was violated in that situation and look at, is there an immutable law in here that you want to call out? You want to have three to five immutable laws. I think we have seven at Tap the Potential. It's a little much. <laughs> it's hard to remember seven. It's much easier to remember three to five. So I would recommend three to five immutable laws. And so some examples of immutable laws are work supports life, not the other way around. We attract our ideal clients and we serve the heck out of them. We choose positivity. We're always looking for what's possible. What can we learn? Mistakes are learning opportunities. Those are some of our immutable laws. Another big one is lead with love. And when situations come up, you can see we're evaluating, okay, are we, if we're going to lead with love here, even though this is a very difficult situation, how are we going to conduct ourselves? And it really, and when we're going to choose positivity, how are we going to conduct ourselves? And if a mistake has happened, I always look at it from the perspective of what can we learn here? How can we do it better next time? And what system do we need to improve so this mistake doesn't happen in the future? 
And for those of you who are watching this live, if you have some immutable laws in your business, go ahead and pop them in the chat. If you have just now started thinking about your immutable laws and you have some ideas of what they meet, might be, just pop those in the chat. I think it's really fun to see other people's immutable laws and it really gets our own thinking going. So beyond the immutable laws, you need your clear, compelling, vivid vision, and you need these immutable laws. You need to train your team members in the immutable laws. And I love training this. And it's so simple to train because anytime a team member acts in alignment with an immutable law, just call it out. Say, hey, thank you so much for doing that. That's exactly how we do it here when we lead with love. Or, you know, a lot of times our team members will have personal circumstances come up and we have to shift things around or work together as a team to support them as they go through that personal circumstance, we always come back to work supports life, not the other way around. We're going to be here for you. And at the same time, we also expect our team members to show up and play full out and serve the heck of out of our clients. So we have work supports life, but we also have we serve the heck out of our ideal clients. So that means we as a team have to come together to figure out if there's a circumstance going on in a team member's life and it's taking them away from what they are doing at Tap the Potential, how do we as a team continue the really good service delivery to keep things going? So you can see how your immutable laws can work together to make sure that things run the way you want them to run. And I'm confident because I'm going to be out on a four-week vacation in July. Yay, I'm so excited. I'm confident my team is going to be able to use our vision and our immutable laws as tools to help them make decisions and make choices in my absence. And if you hear me say, I'm confident, this is what you need to be saying to your team members. I am confident you guys have this. You can do this. And when you are giving your team more and more decision making latitude, they're going to make some decisions that might make you feel like, yeah, that's not quite how I would have done it. Or I wish they'd done it a little different way. Instead of saying that, say, let's look at what happened here. Let's look at the outcome. Are you happy with the outcome? I'm not happy with the outcome. And this is the outcome I would have liked to have had happen. How could you take our immutable laws and our vision and use those to think through a better way to get to this kind of outcome? And that's coaching your team members. It's teaching them how to think and how to problem solve to get to an outcome that is more in line with your immutable laws. And you always you have to keep coming back to you have hired A players. They are whole, competent, capable, complete human beings. When you give them decision making parameters, they will be able to make good decisions that you're going to overall be happy with. And the other thing to keep in mind when you take a four week vacation is some things will not be handled perfectly the way you would have done it. And that's okay because 90% is still an A, right? And sometimes things at 80% are just good enough. And if we are trying to do everything to this 100% level of perfection in our business, then just expect you're going to be the bottleneck and expect that you are going to be stuck in your business the rest of your life. You're not going to have a good quality of life. You're not going to enjoy your family and interests away from the business. And the other thing you need to accept is your business isn't going to grow. It will never grow beyond you because no one's going to want to work with someone who's constantly pushing for that perfectionism. And so you have to be at this place where you decide here's what really matters most in the business. And that's going to be the sweet spot. Right. And when your team knows that they're going to focus their energy and make sure that they know who the top clients are. They know the ideal client profile. That's where they're going to focus their energy. And it may mean that something that's not in the sweet spot isn't done to 100 percent. And that's OK. That can be done to 70 or 80 percent. 70 is average. Right. And so but if it's a sweet spot, it needs to be at 90 percent because that's the best. Right. That's, the, you know, the A and that's the area of you know what we're trying to grow in the business. And your A players will understand this. So you identify your compelling vivid vision. You identify your immutable laws. And the next thing you need to put in place is called the field of play. And this comes from the book, The Field of Play, or it comes from the book In the Game of Work by Chuck Coonrat. He talks about the field of play. And what I love about this book is he starts off by asking, why are we willing 
to work harder at sports and games than we are in the office. And he gives a specific example of pondering why men who set their alarms at 3 a.m., jump out of bed, grab their coffee, and put on their waders to freeze in the marsh while duck hunting. Those, How come those will be the very same men who stumble into the office on Monday morning and struggle to be productive throughout their day? And then he, he goes on and he says, and not only are they getting up at 3 a.m. and they're putting themselves in freezing cold situations and sitting out there in the marsh to duck hunt, but they're also spending large sums of money to do this. So why are we willing to not only work harder at sports than in the office, but also pay for the privilege of playing? And I think that's such a powerful question and insight because it really points to what we need to do as business owners is to make work more like a game and clearly define the field of play. So our team members know what's expected of them. They know what goals we're all working towards as a team and what they are individually responsible for and what winning looks like and what not winning looks like. And so they know what to do every single day. And I'm going to tell you something. I talk to a lot of A players. We survey the A players on our clients' teams, and we get a lot of A players coming through Leadership Boot Camp. And I hear over and over from those A players when I ask them, "What if you can, can only get one thing done today, what's your most important responsibility at work? What result are you responsible for? A lot of them tell me they don't know, right? That's not good. <laughs> and here's how this happens. When you are a growing company, you don't have time to systematize everything. You're hiring people. You're not clarifying expectations. You're onboarding them and you're kind of building this plane as you fly. And because they're A players, you just keep throwing more and more at them. You could do a little bit of the social media and you could do a little bit of the bookkeeping. And, oh, yeah, we need you to do some customer service over here. And before you know it, they're spinning in circles and they don't know if at the end of the day, they can't get anything else done. What's the most important thing that you need from them? But they need to know that. And so that's why clarifying this field of play is so powerful and so important. It creates boundaries. And so if you think about like a soccer field or a football field, your immutable laws are defining the terminal out of bounds behavior. These are behaviors that result in being fired. If someone intentionally on the tap of the potential team chooses to be a jerk and yell at somebody or chew out a client, that's not leading with love. That is terminal out of bounds. Like that's unacceptable behavior. And so you need to define for your team members what this terminal out of bounds behavior is. And the beauty in doing that is you've looked at a football field. It's huge, right? there's a lot of room to play on that field. And so you know where the limits are and there's a lot of freedom within those limits. And as a matter of fact, there's more freedom because you know what the limits are. And so that becomes incredibly helpful. But the other thing is if you look at a football field, there are two goals, right? And your team, the goals are the expected results that you want from your team members. They need to know what to work for. If you hand them a football and you say, go make a touchdown, but you haven't taught them what a touchdown is and what constitutes a touchdown, they're going to run all over the field. They're not going to know. And if you don't explain, this is the goal you're working towards, not the one over here on the other side of the field, they may run to the wrong goal. And so the expected results come create, you know, here's what to work for and here's the direction to head. So this ties into you having a clear, compelling, vivid vision. So winning the game is not the vision. You know, you want to have a winning season and you want to get to the championships. That's the vision, right? But the initial goal is what do you have to do today? Well, today you have to get on the field, you have to play and you have to make that touchdown and you have to score multiple touchdowns. So here are the expected results that, you know, the daily successful activities that you need to do. And they need those activities need to tie into the greater company goals and the greater vision. If they are not aligned, you can tell people, hey, I want you to make sure that all the data is entered correctly. 
And so they're going to focus on getting data entered correctly. But if that has no relevance to the expected result in their role and the greater company goals and the greater vision and the sweet spot in all of that, you're just having them measure something that has no overall relevance. So be careful about just willy-nilly creating expected results for your team members. You always wanna look at what's our vision, what's our sweet spot, how does this role serve the sweet spot, and what are the expected results we need from somebody in this role to know that they're succeeding and serving the sweet spot and helping us create this profitable business. So that is what your team members need to know so they can win this game. And there are also rules in when you play a game. And so the terminal out of bounds behaviors are when the game is over. Like you're walking off the field, you're not playing anymore, you're fired. But there are also just rules of play where if you mess up and you don't play exactly right, it's not going to be that you're fired. It's more of a teaching opportunity like, hey, we do it this way. And this is a much better, more effective way to do it. So it creates opportunities for feedback. So those need to be defined too. And at Tap the Potential, we just, we look at those as our SOPs, our general operating principles. And so when someone violates one of those, we're just going to have a conversation about it. And usually it just takes one conversation and then things are back on track because we have A players on the team. When you don't have A players on the team, you'll find yourself talking about these rules and these expectations all the time. And what you'll see is you'll see uptick in progress. And it's like, whoa, all of a sudden, I'm so glad I had a conversation with them because now they've improved. But then like three days later, you see the slide back to the old patterns of behavior. And that's someone who's not coachable. That's someone that you really need to look at letting go of and replacing them with an A player because that is someone who will pull a lot of energy away from you and the other leaders on your team as you're trying to get them to, to follow the rules and do what's expected of them. So when you have this clearly defined field of play, your team knows what winning looks like and it allows your team members to function as a team. We hear this a lot, especially in virtual companies. People will say, I feel like I'm working in a silo. I don't understand why decisions are being made. I don't understand why I'm being told to do things a certain way and I don't have any communication. And when you have a clear, compelling, vivid vision, you have your immutable laws, you have expected results from everyone. It's much easier for people to see, oh, this is where my role fits in. And my, if I don't get my expected results, I see it impacts this team member and that team. And oh my goodness, there's four team members impacted when I'm not playing this game and I'm not winning at my game. And so it makes it fun and it, it creates this desire to succeed and because your A players understand that what they're doing is something beyond themselves. And this is what really goes into creating a great place to work because there's a meaning, there's a why for your team members now. When they show up and do something that's hard for them, when they have to, you know, eat the frog <laughs> in the morning, do the hardest thing, the thing that stretches them and challenges them, when they understand hey, I'm not just doing this because Dr. Sabrina told me to do it. And she said, it'll be really effective. I'm doing it because if I don't do it, I know it's going to negatively impact other team members. And when I do do it and I succeed at it, it elevates our entire team. It moves our entire team towards the vision that creates that compelling why. And your team members need that to keep playing the game. If you've ever watched a losing season, you know, there's, I love movies about football games and sports because it's always about the team that has to come from the bottom and they have to, they're, you know, like the bad news bears, they have to really pull it together and win and come out on top and they learn all these life lessons along the way. And usually there's tears involved from the men and the women who are watching the, the movie. But it really, this is what it's all about for us in small business. We are the bad news bears in our companies. We have a lot of things we have to learn and grow and overcome together. There's no greater self-development plan than being in small business because you're going to learn and grow. You're going to be constantly challenged, especially if you're a team of A players. And you're going to need to learn new skills and you're going to have to do hard things. And that means everybody on the team is going to have to learn new skills and do hard things. And there's a lot of joy and satisfaction of seeing 
if at first you don't succeed, keep trying because those small steps forward taken in a consistent direction really do lead to big change over time. So just to kind of pull this back in here, I started all of this because you want to be able to take a four-week vacation and you want some time off. And so we're talking about these high-level things in your business, this strategy. This is all $10,000 an hour activity, by the way, the time that you're spending here. So if you've been here live with me or you're listening on the podcast, you know, pat yourself on the back. You've done some $10,000 an hour activity, and it's going to be even more valuable when you take action from this. So don't just say, oh, yeah, I need to write a vision. And, oh, yeah, I need to get some immutable laws. And yes, I need to define these results for my A players. Do something about it. And if you want our support at Tap the Potential, book a call and let us talk to you about what our support in the Better Business, Better Life program would look like as we take you through this. So today we talked about the core components that you need to have in place to set your team up for success for you to be away from the business. And so the worst thing you could do is have not do these things. And then there's some sort of emergency. You have an accident or you have an illness that pulls you away from the business and your team is floundering because you haven't taken the time to put the vision in place. You haven't put the immutable laws in place. You haven't defined the field of play. That's not setting your team up for success. But when you take the time, block out two hours and go think about your immutable laws and write them down, block out three days, go somewhere, do a a little mini retreat for yourself and create your compelling vivid vision. That is highly valuable. It's such a wonderful thing to do. And so by the way, to keep yourself motivated, I really want to invite you to take our four week vacation pledge. You can head to tapthepotential.com forward slash pledge. When you pledge, you're saying you're taking a four week vacation. Here's why you deserve a four week vacation, why it matters to you. When you're setting a date, you're saying, I think I'm going to do it by XYZ day. And then when we receive your pledge, we reach out to you because we want to support you in it. And we want to look at, well, what resources do you need to make this happen? What gaps do you have right now in your business? And we have so many resources at Tap the Potential that we can share with you. So head on over to tapthepotential.com forward slash pledge. Take the four-week vacation pledge. The other cool thing that happens when you take the pledge is you will get an invitation to join our Mighty Networks community. And we are doing so much in our Mighty Networks community. It's really entrepreneurs coming together who are wanting to take their lives back from their business. And it's that power of being amongst like-minded people. And we're sharing resources and supporting you there too. So you get invited to our Mighty Networks community. You will get invited to the upcoming Better Business, Better Life Jumpstart where you get to, and there's no charge by the way for the Jumpstart, but you get to work with us for five days. We have an hour long workshop each day for five days. And I walk you through the Tap the Potential solution and starting to implement key components of that in your business. And what's beautiful about the Jump Starts is they are on Zoom. It's a closed Zoom meeting. Myself and other members of the Tap the Potential team are there, as well as the other business owners. And so I do some teaching. And then there's lots of opportunity to ask questions, to say, I don't quite understand how this applies to my business, Dr. Serena. Would you help me figure out how to put this in place? And So it's a great place to start experiencing what it's like to be in our Better Business, Better Life coaching program. Our Better Business, Better Life coaching program is a small group coaching program. And we are known for our high, high level of personalization in the Better Business, Better Life program. You won't find a small group coaching program that offers you the opportunity to learn from high level business owners and benefit from the individualized attention of myself and our team supporting you in working on making your business sustainably profitable. So head on over and make the pledge, tapthepotential.com forward slash pledge, and we'll get you in the jump start. And a member of our success team will reach out to you and say, tell me what's going on. Tell me when you want to take this vacation. What are the challenges you have? Let's set up some vacation tests for you so you can practice things. And it's just a real solid way to start putting some accountability in place for yourself for this, the meaningful change and transformation that you want to make happen in your business. So I appreciate those of you who've been here live with 
with me today. And I want to remind you, we record live every Friday, 1130 Central on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So come be a part of the podcast recording. Come share your thoughts and qu ask your questions. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Next week, I'm going to come to you and talk with you about the coaching that you do with your team and the powerful coaching questions that you use with them to help them make decisions in your absence. So that'll be part three of how to take the four week vacation. Bye for now. Thank you for spending time with me today. Join me in our Tap the Potential Mighty Networks community at tapthepotential.com forward slash group. Share your aha moments from today's episode, ask me questions, and join in on the fun with your fellow entrepreneurs on the journey to designing sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. Isn't it time you take your life back? And finally, share today's episode with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. This is real life business. Keep your chin up, keep moving forward. You got this.